There are some people who know exactly what they want to do in their life. So they have a clear objective and they can move straight to this objective and reach all their goals. And then there are some other people like me who still can go forward, but they keep jumping around from one field to another. So if you have a similar situation and you want to change your path, your study field, your research field, you might be wondering like, is it too late for me to change field? It's going to be too hard. And today we are going to answer this question because I'm going to share my experience and also I'm going to tell you three points which I think really are important to consider if you want to change your path. And just to be clear, I'm going to analyze starting from the jump from high school to university, even changing midway during your thesis, and even for PhD who reached the end and since they hated their PhD, they went to do some kind of postdoc, which is totally unrelated to their PhD. So let's get started. So as you can hear from my beautiful pizza accent, I went to high school in Italy and there you can already choose some kind of path. So my high school was something like science high school and then you can directly go to university. And I really wanted to go to a university which was in mechatronics because it sounded cool. But then I was considering that I didn't really have a background on electronics. And so I was really worrying like I will never be able to do something cool in mechatronics and not skilled enough. And I was stupid because actually <laughs> I changed almost every other time during my path and that change could have been so easy. Like I think in one month probably I would reach all the knowledge that I really needed. So instead of mechatronics, I went to something called physical engineering, which already from the name is something really, really confused because it's not physics nor engineering. So anyway, I followed this path. It was pretty cool, but close to the end, I was reading a book about quantum mechanics that got me really really excited so then I decided what if my thesis is not exactly on physical engineering but is more on quantum mechanics so for my thesis I went to the Institute of Metrology and I did my thesis on quantum cryptography which was not too much related with my course anyway I was a little worried but then I figured out that nobody cares so it was okay. So I'd say all the changes so far were extremely easy. And then I reached the master in which I had to move to another course. So the problem here was that people at the university realized that nobody knew what physical engineering was about. So they decided to rebrand it to nanotechnology. And since they were rebranding, they also changed all the classes. So this was kind of a forced change because I didn't really want to go to nanotechnology, but if I wanted to stay in physical engineering, I had to move to another university and I was lazy. But at least this change was easy because people made it easy for us to just follow the same track even if we had a small change of path but they pretended that it was still the same course. So at the end of my master, I reached the thesis and I wasn't super happy with nanotechnology. So I went to microfluidics, which also turned out to be a project which was not super micro, but again, it was nobody cared part two, so everything was fine. And here I want to be clear, like it was fine because pretty much what people cared for my thesis was that it wasn't too far from the subject that I was studying. And especially it was something which was scientifically sound. It was something which makes sense. And I did a decent thesis, so I, I think I was okay. I got the maximum score anyway. So here comes the PhD because I didn't want to find a real job. So I kept staying in university and still being some kind of student. But you can also do real research as a PhD student. So I didn't really want to go to nanotechnology or do anything related to that. So I start spamming CV around and this time it was a little harder because many labs didn't have much availability. And so if you are applying for a lab who works on, let's say, nanotransducers, they will most likely pick someone who already has some experience with nanotransducers. But anyway, after two, three months, everything 
was set and I found a lab which was working in photonics. Again, something not really related. Some years later, I completed my PhD thesis. Everything was happy, but I wanted to change again. Indeed, this time I found a really interesting field and it was something fascinating at the boundary between physics, mathematics, social sciences. It's really a mess. But it was cool and I really wanted to get in. So I started studying because I really wanted to understand exactly what I was going to do or what I was applying for. And this was quite long because it took me I think six, seven months maybe. Anyway, after this time I had a rough idea of what I wanted to do. So I start applying for jobs, I start sending my CV all around the universe and quite for some time nobody replied. You see, the problem this time was that really people were looking for someone with the skills in that specific job. And it was really hard for me to say like, you know, I still have some skills that are pretty interesting for this job or that can be useful or just please take me, give me money. So at the end I had a really cool opportunity with a professor who told me like, I cannot give you directly a job, but we can apply together for fundings. And if your project gets funded, you get the money. So we applied for several fundings and some months later I finally got the answer that I was accepted for a fellowship, especially the Marie Curie Fellowship, which was the coolest one. No offense for all the other fellowships. And that's how I got this last job that is what I'm doing right now. Was this last transition easy? Not at all. And in total I stayed two years without working, at least without being paid, because I worked a lot. So here are my three main points to consider if you want to switch your career. And these are all things that I experienced personally. And point number one is consider competitors. I don't know why, but people don't think too much about this when considering a career shift, but this is really fundamental. So are you going to have some competitors or not? Because maybe you are shifting from one university course to another and you know the people that are going to apply for the second course are really small number and there are a lot of places, then you don't really have competitors. The only thing that can prevent you to make this shift if is someone decides that you are not skilled enough. But if you are going for a specific job then there probably there is going to be one two places and you know there are a lot of people that probably are going to send their cv for that so you don't just need to know that stuff you also need to be in the top rank and this is going to be a really really hard point number two this is a little more straightforward is how far is your initial field from the second field the one where you want to go this is important for two reasons so the first one is how much do you need to study? Because of course, if the second field is really far, then you need to study a lot of things to be able to do anything in that other field. The other problem that is not that straightforward is the fact that actually people are going to judge you, to judge your CV. And if your initial field is really far, it's possible that they don't even know what you do, what your skills are. So it's really hard to judge you. And if they need to judge you and they have a list of candidates and they don't know how to judge you, probably you will be at the bottom. Point number three, how much effort are you going to put in this transition? And this is not just something motivational, it's mostly like considering your situation. Because maybe you have all day free, so you can put like 12 hours per day, but your situation might also be really different. Maybe you have a family, you have a job, and you cannot quit the job. You cannot stay one single month without a salary. In that case, maybe you have just a bunch of hours per day to dedicate to this transition. So after considering all of this, I have an extra tip, and is learn how to sell yourself. I'm not going to explore the details here. If you're interested, maybe I will have some other videos coming up on this. But the thing is, if you're going to compete with other people, you need to figure out a way to say, hey, I'm special. I'm not just from another field, which most likely will put you like on the bottom. You have to figure out what makes you special, something maybe related to that field or your background that makes you stand out. And even if it's going to be hard, 
this is definitely possible. So you have some skills that other people don't have. So identify these skills and try to figure out a way to make them look good, to make them look special for that job. And that's it. I hope it was interesting. I hope it was useful. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments. Also consider subscribing. In this channel, we talk about social complexity, agent-based models, computer simulations, video games, which can be used for simulations, and especially science, like what is science, how it is made, and the journey of a scientist into science. And thanks for listening and see you next time.